This Torah class is brought to you by TorahAnytime.com. Okay, Agon Erev Shabbos Rabbi we're continuing our series on Tefillah. We're in the bracha of Yoyt Ar, in the brachas Kriya Shema, which we said corresponds to the Heichal and the Shulchan, the Menorah, and the Mizbech HaKtoyres. And Yoyt Ar is the Shulchan. The series of two is sponsored by our good friend, Rav B'Tzal Rose of Los Angeles, Le Nishmas' brother, Tzvi ben Levi Yitzchak. It's a Shem and Aliyah. B'yomel Tzioshe for his whole family. I'd be asked to go Let us uh, study a few lines of this bracha. This is a short shir. We say, HaMeir la'aretz v'ladar maleha. Hashem illuminates the earth and for those who live in it, Barach now this word Rachamim is a very important word. It is invoked, Rabbi Isai, in the first two brachas of Brachas Krishma. We say, Berachamim. Then we say, Rachem Aleinu. We, we ask Hashem for mercy actually, not only in Ahava Rabbah, but in this blessing as well. We say, Tzorim B'skad, Mugin Shem B'skad, Rachem Aleinu. And that is because we are, it is the yoim, and the midah of the yoim is the midah of rachamim. And therefore rachamim is a predominant theme in association with the light. Now what is the rachamim in the way that Hashem illuminates the world? So, simply, if the sun was a little closer to the earth, then everything would melt. Everything would burn up. If the earth was further, even a mashahu, the earth would freeze and Hashem illuminates Barachamim by putting us at the exact distance and angle that's needed for our success. Now, we mentioned that Rishayim Bechayehem Nikroim Mesim. Rishayim in their death, excuse Rishayim Bechayehem Nikroim Mesim. Rishayim are considered dead even when they're alive. Why? Because they see the sun and they don't thank Hashem for the sun. We do see the sun. But we are accustomed to thinking, A, we're not that impressed by it, because we're jaded and we're used to it. And we also think, well, if the sun rose today in the east and will send the west, it will be that way tomorrow. Um... However, Rabbi Schwab says that this doesn't have to be. It's not even true. There is no requirement that just because the sun rose yesterday, that it will rise tomorrow. It is actively dependent on the will of Hashem, who is mechadesh betuvay b'chol yom tamid ma'asei voracious. We say, ha-meyer la'aretz v'adar malabarachamim uvetuvay we believe that the sun doesn't rise because the Hashem has like a, a, a timer that He set for a few thousand years. And now Hashem is the one actively propelling everything into motion. Why betuvay? Why mechadesh betuvay? That comes from the Pasuk. Vayara lekim asarkitoiv. And we say, Tamid. The shining of the sun is not one time every day. It's wherever you are in the world. So this is a constant process. Now, says Rabbi Schwab, we solidify, we fortify this teaching that Hashem is the one who illuminates the earth. We say the Pasuk, Marabu Masacha Hashem Kulam Bechachma Asisa. Asisa implies the f- finality of the performance and the completion. That the more we investigate, the more we study Hashem's Chachma and His arrangement and His plan and His purpose, we see that every phenomenon of nature is precise. And by 
by studying nature, we see it's kulam b'chachma asisa. Mala ha'aretz kinyanecha. This is one of the most important lines in tefillah. Mala ha'aretz kinyanecha. The world is full of Hashem's kinyanim. What does that mean? The world is full of Hashem's possessions? What does it mean Hashem possesses things? Like a person, we have a house or a car, so Hashem has possessions? What's a kinyan? A kinyan is an activity that makes something yours. Like when you do hagba, you lift up a movable object, or you do mashicha, you pull a movable object. The Kenyan demonstrates ownership. So a Kenyan is something that you do to demonstrate ownership that it's yours. So too the world is full of Hashem's possessions, meaning demonstrations of His ownership that the world is not Hefker. And that reality is not coincidence. The same way when we acquire something, we do an act to demonstrate we are the owner. The whole world is full of signs of ownership of a creator that this world is not ownerless. But Hashem is the Bailim. Apikar, some heretics look at nature as if it has an, it's an independent force without anyone guiding it. They say there was some kind of instantaneous explosion that the world came from. Foolishness. Lunacy. And they even spew greater lunacy that all the phenomena of nature are just accidents that have no end game. That man is just an accidental, accidental composite of bones and blood. And therefore his actions are meaningless. But they're blind. Because we look at the world and we see ownership. Every detail of the world says there's a koina. The kinyanim, the possessions of Hashem are the signs of ownership we see. Like any, any sane person would know that if they went into a desert and they saw a, in the sand carved out C-A-T, cat, would you say the wind came along and blew it to write those letters? Or did someone write it? So most people would say somebody wrote it. How much money would you bet that somebody wrote it? Would you bet a thousand dollars? Yeah. Would you bet a million dollars? Probably. Because you could do a study and you'll find that the wind never came close to writing anything intelligible since the world existed because anything that has wisdom can never be an accident. Now, what is more complicated, the letters C-A-T or a cat? Well, a cat is a billion times more sophisticated and complex than letter C-A-T. Well, if you would bet a million dollars that somebody wrote the word cat, then why wouldn't you bet your life that somebody created the world, which is infinitely more complex and everything you look at in the world Everything should bring a person a sense of astonishment, awe. A person should be moved when they see the sun. Think it's an accident that the light needed for this planet was put exactly at the right distance? Human being, more than anything else, needs air. Air is... Only a certain percent oxygen, maybe 20%, and other gases. How is it possible that human being is found in a place where the exact cocktail of gases that is needed for his breathing is present? 
After air, a person needs water. What is water? Two atoms of hydrogen, one atom of oxygen. They're both gases. If a person was thirsty and they try to drink hydrogen, it's not going to do anything. If a person was thirsty and they try to drink oxygen, they would sound like, I don't know, Mickey Mouse or something, or they would be, they would, uh, be um, lightheaded. And the Rebbe Hashem takes two gases and he mixes it together to form a liquid. And that liquid keeps a person alive. So every time a person drinks a cup of water, they should be so astonished and full of happiness and recognition of Hashem's Kenyan. Kenyan means a sign of ownership. When a person drinks a cup of water, that should inspire a person to have a clear recognition that there's a Creator and one should feel gratitude to the Creator, and one should feel a sense and a need to show, to pay back the Creator for His kindness. These are the Kinyanim of Hashem. Kinyan means displays of ownership. Kinyanecha. It's as if Hashem made a Kinyan on the world, because there are clear signs of His ownership. Now we know why Avraham <laughs> was one of the greatest Kenyanim of Hashem. Because Avraham taught the world that Yesh Boire Umanhig. Rav Schwab uh, tells over a story that the first time he took a jet to England, until then he said he used to travel by a plane that it took to get to England a day and a half, 36 hours. You know that? And they would fly so low over the ocean that you could see the glaciers in the ocean. Nowadays you can't see glaciers in the ocean because you're flying over the clouds. Um, he says, but back in the day, you could see, uh, go flying, to, you could see the glaciers. You could see wondrous things. He said you used to be able to make a bracha, Hayam. And when they invented the jet plane, I took my first trip and I asked Rishus from the steward to daven in a private place for a short amount of time and they said, okay. And says Rav Shab, when I got up to the words, Ma Rabu Masecha Hashem, I was so moved. I looked out the window and I contemplated the great wonder that we're above the clouds, above the clouds of Hashem, Ma Rabu Masecha Hashem. And when I came home, I told Reb Breuer, I said, Rebbe, I never said the words, Marabu Masach Hashem, was such a Cyrus. He says, what? Every time I look at a daisy, how this flower grows on the ground with these tiny roots, I have that feeling every single time I look at a daisy. So think about it. We're thinking about Reb Schwab and says, huh? What are you so inspired of going on an airplane, going over the clouds? Think about how jaded we are. Think about how we've lost the sense of awe of Hashem's creation, how we take everything for granted, and how coarsened we allow ourselves to become. And Rabbi Schwab says that when he told his Rebbe, he says, What? I'm moved every time I see a little flower. And this is one of uh, Rabbi Schwab's um, insights into what happened to Bilam. Bilam can have a donkey talking to him. And he's not moved. He's not moved. Bilam says, Hey, why you, uh, don't talk back to me. Bilam, something just happened, the likes of which never happened since... The beginning of creation. Your animal's talking to you. You're not shocked. You're not in awe. You're not... You, your senses are so corroded. I mean, we could say the same thing about ourselves. You know, we live in a time... Klal Yisrael did not have Eretz Yisrael for 2,000 years. We, we could not go to Eretz Yisrael. For 2,000 years. You know, a few, 200 years ago, 
200 years ago, there were a few hundred Jews in Eretz Yisrael. For 2,000 years, we could not go to Eretz Yisrael. There were more Jews in the shul on your corner than there were in the whole country. We weren't allowed to go. Yushalayim was off limits. And then all of a sudden, there's a holocaust. And then the Rebbe Shalom says, Okay, Klal Yisrael, you could go back to Eretz Yisrael. And then every single country in the world, except for the United States of America, pours out to Eretz Yisrael. And now, there are more Jews in any random yeshiva in Eretz Yisrael than there were in the whole country two years ago, 200 years ago. And we just go on with our lives like, you know. But what else is new? And here, these great tzaddikim, they were awestruck by a flower or by a cloud. Rabbi Schwab says, I remember, I once told Rabbi, um, one time I heard Rabbi Rucham say, that just like we say, when there is thunder, really we should say, on a cup of water. Because that also shows the strength and the gvur of Hashem. But we're not on the Madriga to appreciate something that, that is routine. But, says Rabbi Schwab, if somebody studies even the slightest detail of creation, we should recognize Mala Ha'aretz Kinyanecha. Kinyanecha is not just things Hashem owns. Signs of ownership. Signs that the world is not a Hefker world. So that's a very important insight. I want to wish everyone a wonderful Shabbos. And uh, uh, wh- wh- for whoever it's relevant to, Sunday morning, we're going to try to do the... Um, the Eon Shir is going to be on Daf Yud, and then Daf Yud Aleph. Okay, it's going to be two blot, because the next Sunday um, I'm going to be in Eretz Yisrael. And then Sunday night will be Daf Hashua Yod Aleph on the Beis. And uh, stay tuned for the rest of the schedule. Have a great Shabbos. Kol Tov. Be well. Shabbos, everyone. Kol Tov. Um, Sunday, Monday, Shul, or... Monday, yeah. Next. Yeah. You've just experienced another Torah class brought to you by TorahAnytime.com.